There's nothing in my life I have ever come across that has affected every single aspect of my life and being a human being in the world so completely and thoroughly as mindfulness. What is different? I feel like when things are bad and stressful and overwhelming, it's like this spiral leading you down. And the opposite is that when you have that pause button or that practice to go to or that that moment to just be in. I, I just find that's unlocking so many things. Game Changer doesn't sufficiently describe how mindfulness has changed my brain. My life is not dissimilar to how it was before, but it's completely transformed the way I experience my life for the better. It's not that everything is fixed. It's not like we sit and meditate and life is fixed. Mm. It becomes an adventure. What would you say to someone who's thinking about giving mindfulness or mindfulness-based stress reduction MBSR a chance? First of all, I just want to quickly thank you for beginning to watch this podcast episode. If you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to do so. would love it if you join our community. You'll also be up to date on the latest content. And this really helps me reach out to more guests. You can also visit our website, centerformindfulness.ca. There's free events about mindfulness and laughter. Hope you enjoy this episode. I am so excited to share today's conversation. If you're really interested to hear a story of change and transformation and what's actually possible practically in daily life, I think you may enjoy today's episode. It's not about perfection and mindfulness, but actually what change it can help us with. So I want to welcome Joanna Jerkovich. First, a warm welcome to you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. And I have to tell you, I'm so excited to share this. And even you sending me your bio, it just has such warmth and aliveness. So I just want to read your bio and then for folks to know a little more about you. So uh, Joanna is originally from uh, Glasgow, Scotland, and she lives with her family in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. While experiencing a few hard things all at the same time, oof, can we relate to that? Hard things all at the same time. Joe came to mindfulness, trying to find some stillness in the chaos and mend some broken parts. When not working in factual television, I'd love to learn more about that too. Factual television, Joe can be found digging in her garden, mucking about in the forest, and having an adventure with family and friends. Thank you so much again for joining us. And I wonder if we can start with what even led you to be curious about mindfulness yourself? So... I, I don't know if it's my Scottishness or my age or, or whatever, but uh, mindfulness for me historically was something um, that other people did, mm. you know, sitting cross-legged, ting, ting, you know, on a mountaintop or, or whatever, mm. quietly, serenely, um, quietly and serenely are not things that I, words that I think people would use to describe me. Mm. Um, and I really came to a place where I was a total mess. Um, you know, when you, you, when you go under electrical cables and you can hear that, like you can feel that static in the air, you can hear yeah. that. Um, I felt like that was my brain all the time. And I kind of descended into, um, I started to experience panic attacks for the first mm -hmm. time which were horrifying and terrifying in ways I, I didn't understand mm -hmm. at the time. Um, like I was really scared. I didn't know um, what was happening to my brain and if it was ever going to be okay again. Mm -hmm. um, so there was all, there were all sorts of things happening in my life at the time, none of which had a, an easy or a fast solution. None of them were going to just suddenly be magic to weigh. Mm -hmm. um and it's kind of like this compounding there's difficult things happening and the more overwhelmed you feel the less capacity you have to make changes and to deal with those overwhelming things 
and put supports in place for yourself. So I just found myself, you know, crashing and burning, emotions all over the place. Um, so I had ended up doing a, a CBT course, a cognitive behavioral therapy course, which mm -hmm. kind of touched on mindfulness. It was kind of like an introduction to mindfulness. Mm. But at the same time, a friend of mine who was having an equally difficult time, different flavor, same kind of deal, mm -hmm. had done the MBSR course. And oh, the mindfulness based stress reduction for those who are not familiar with it. Yes. Yes. The, the eight week course it is eight weeks, right? Totally. Yeah. I had done the eight week course and I, I kind of was like, I've got to do something because whatever is happening right now is a really bad scene and I've got to do something. So I kind of dived into it, um, a little desperate, mm. a little hopeful, well, a lot hopeful, um, but kind of like a, just a bit like throwing caution to the wind, like we've got to do something. So let's give this a go. Mm. Um, and it has been, I feel like game changer isn't, doesn't sufficiently describe how mindfulness has changed, um, I want to say my life it's changed my brain mm. it's changed the way in which i experience life my life is not dissimilar to how it was before um but it's completely transformed that's a better word it's transformed the way i experience my life mm. for the better um it's not that everything is fixed or that you know i I'm certainly not now somebody who sits ting ting on a mountain top, <laughs> but, um, which is the stereotype of mindfulness, oh, isn't it? Like, oh, oh totally. peaceful on a mountain top, just not totally. affected by anything in life. Totally. <laughs> um, but I just don't feel scared, overwhelmed. I feel like I have capacity and, um, agency. Most importantly, I feel like mm. I have agency over all the stuff. Mm. Like I get to choose. Um, so that's kind of how I, I came to mindfulness. So you're naming this um, agency, this capacity to be with things. So um, can you share a little bit about that? Like what is it like being with stress? Because all we have, we all have different forms of stress, work stress, family stress, health stress, mm -hmm. financial stress, like list goes on and on mm -hmm. and on. Technological stress, like a few minutes ago, even, you know, even though my phone is off, I don't know how it rang. I don't know if you're able to hear it, but <laughs> <laughs> I had like a moment of like internal stress. I'm like, oh, can anyone else hear that? <laughs> like things happen in the day. Right. That's mm -hmm. kind of like a uh, uh, little, little stressor. So mm -hmm. what is it like this agency in being with the same things as you name, but it's different. What's what is different? So and I want to say right off the bat, I, I don't feel like I do not feel stressed anymore. I feel stressed all oh, the time. Yeah. But I, I think it's a, a diminishing of fear about the stress that's to come. And it's more of a sense of, and it's also very much a practice. Like anything, what's it? If you don't use it, you lose it. Mm. So I definitely am at a place where if I notice that I am irritable, more anxious, I can feel that feeling rising, the mist rising. Mm. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, right, right, right. I'm going to, I'm going to make a solid effort to, to, to do 10 minutes of mindfulness every morning this week. Mm. or something like I'll, I'll put something back in place more that's more intentional because you do you know like because life comes in and, and takes over things so you have for me definitely there's a bit of ebb and flow mm. and also stressors in life there's ebb and there's flow yeah I'm getting all the thoughts now <laughs> knowing it's like knowing you have a really solid tool in the toolbox 
So if when the stuff is coming at you, it's like being able to say, oh, hang on a sec. Let me just reach into my toolbox. I've got this thing that I know works. I don't really understand why it works. I don't understand why when I meditate for 10 minutes every morning for a week, I am a happier person. There's no question in my mind. It's not that I'm sitting there having these floaty moments and thinking, God, I'm so good at this now. I'm sitting there thinking, I, I need to buy toilet roll. I need to go stop that, stop that, meditate, meditate. Oh, I didn't fill in that form for my kid to take to school. Stop that. Like, mm -hmm. I, I still very much sometimes sit there thinking, I don't know what I'm doing. This is hard. Mm -hmm. Or, but I'm here, you know, like I, I'm, I'm having. Yes. <laughs> I'm having that whole journey with it. But at the end of the day, doing that practice makes me less anxious, calmer, happier. It makes me, it creates space for the joy to come in. Mm. It makes me more likely to notice a joyful moment. Mm. Whether that is at the end of kid bedtime where you just need them to go to sleep, reminding yourself to close your eyes and smell your daughter's hair, mm. you know, or to not rush that final night, night then and creeping to, back to get to the room. next thing, to rush yeah, to the next just, thing. Yeah. Just to be in that moment just for a second, you know, and again, it's not like you're suddenly nothing nothing bothers me i am like no but it's like it's sort of twofold it's having the tool in the toolbox but also for whatever reason i can't explain opens up those moments more in life mm. to experience um happiness joy calm gratitude contentment and also I guess the big thing for me is that pause when the feelings do come rushing in the negative things, the, the anxiety, the fear, the anger, the, the, whatever it is, when that comes rushing in, and this is the real practice for me is inserting that pause mm. so that I get to respond rather than react. Um. And again, it's a practice. Yes. It does not come easy to me but it's that knowing i have this tool and i get to use it when i remember what i've been practicing like it, it's there for me and it's mine whenever i reach for it yes kind of thing you, you know what's amazing about what you're sharing is your direct subjective experience matches what the research tells us about the benefits in terms of brain level, what it's doing, like this more optimism, this is happier, less anxiety, mood change, like improvement in mood, mm -hmm. and not as a magic bullet. Like we practice mindfulness mm -hmm. and everything is fixed, but you're naming actually, and this is what's so valuable as you're sharing your story, is it does not need to be perfect. And that's what stops people. Like, oh, I didn't meditate, whatever amount of time, every day it's all waste. Mm. But, but what you're doing is actually so helpful, which is you're like a researcher into your life. You're saying, when I practice this on these days, I notice something different in my life. Without and, a doubt. And that's the most precious finding that anyone can discover when they give themselves the chance to see for themselves, like, does it actually help me? Because if it doesn't, well, what good is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. and that and that part i don't understand i understand intellectually the part about learning and practicing to in search mm. the wedge of awareness mm. right and be kind to yourself in that moment and just feel what's happening and and sit with it and and don't rush it and just like i i understand that that makes sense in terms mm. of science and hormones and bodily function and process but the overall feeling calmer and happier or, or more joyful, I don't understand that. But quite honestly, at this point, I don't care. <laughs> because if it's a byproduct of the other stuff, then how awesome is that? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and the and the other thing, you know, I mean, mindfulness has so many different um, ways, different pathways in which you can discuss it or explore it, or mm -hmm. I, I am discovering. Part of it is that just is that sense of just being with whatever mm -hmm. comes up. Because I'm not a patient person, mm -hmm. you know. Typically, I'm like, well, what does it mean? How can mm -hmm. I? What what should I do with this? How do I solve it? How do you know? Mm -hmm or whatever fixing quickly fixing get to the fixing next it. thing make, yeah make that feeling and I'm, I'm ready to move on i'm always oh. thinking about the next thing the next thing the next thing you know i haven't even fi dealt with this thing and i'm already you know brain going 100 miles an hour but that sense of just being i caught there's so many cliches i've come across or like memes med mindfulness like <laughs> things and you know to old me or to, I don't know, to Scottish me, they sound ridiculous, but they're so true. Mm. You know, like, why is it called the present? Because it's a gift. Oh, yes. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Mm. And, you know, even hard things, even hard feelings, difficult moments, they are a gift too. Mm. Because they allow us to... <clears throat> Well, so many different things, but be in ourselves and and explore those things. And mm. it, it might prompt you to reach out to somebody or to find, you're not always going to agree with everybody, but find a place where you can be with that together mm. in your disagreement or, or you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. It just opens up this space where I think I didn't have or didn't allow myself I'm not sure but that space before to be in it and really listen to it and and you know that brings me back to what brought me here was that um that brought me to mindfulness was I was having so many challenges with my body mm. you know chronic migraines um like stress does horrible things to our our physical bodies it's not just in your in your mind you know mm. and and so it, it's not just your your it's not just your thoughts you're listening to but in the process of mindfulness you know the dreaded body scan mm -hmm. i call it the dreaded body scan <laughs> because there were so many of them in the beginning of the MBSR course and I would get so frustrated because I would just fall asleep and I'm like mm. I'm paying all this money I'm falling asleep ah, <laughs> yes but I through the process I have learned like if, if I start to get a headache now the first thing I do is come upstairs and I sit and I just listen to my my body oh, you know I listen see. to the blood pumping in my ears and say okay head I hear you hear what you're trying to tell me you're mm. trying to tell me just to sit down for a second just a second just take even if you're making dinner or your you know kids coming home from school whatever just stop just for a second mm. and, and i know how um important validation is to me as a, a you know human being you know these are my feelings and this is how i feel world mm -hmm. validate me and i feel like i'm kind of giving my body that same um respect is that the right word uh -huh. i'm not sure or giving my body that moment um to say it's okay you're not in danger right now i hear mm. you i'm listening you know mm. and there's a difference between i've got a headache i'll take i'll take an advil and um hopefully it doesn't turn into a migraine but it probably will and mm. okay i'm just gonna sit down and feel the blood pumping in my head mm. and feel the heat in my cheeks and feel the cortisol rushing through my veins over mm. whatever it is yes and feeling that and and saying to my body i hear you and it does make a difference you feel everything just kind of mm. just you know just for a moment and it, and it has that sort of thing in addition has been transformative mm. You know, because if you, you keep getting headaches and you keep taking Advil, your body's going to say, oh, you thought that was a headache. 
I'll show you a headache. Like, I will make you stop if you won't stop. And, you know, that that is what happened to me a few years ago. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm, I just, I'm in such a different place with it mm. now. So this, like, life-changing, as you're saying, or transformational in terms of mm. e even the number of headaches or migraines and managing them has shifted. Yeah. 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 Completely yeah. and utterly. Yeah. And again, it's not that I never get a migraine anymore. No. But it, they're a fraction of yeah. what they were. Yeah. See, what you're doing there, as you, you, what I heard you describe it so well, is actually listening to the body. Mm. Listening. And something about mindfulness is tuning in to our experience, internal experience, whether it's sensations, physical body, tuning into our thoughts, our emotions, and even if they're all unpleasant. And there's wisdom in tuning into them, which is so uncomfortable. Right? Mm. And as you know, at times people, as they begin a journey, like in mindfulness based stress reduction, like, what? This is stressful. I'm feeling things more. Or like, absolutely. I'm, yeah, like, wait a minute. I thought I just got to do a mindfulness program and I get blissed out. And totally. <laughs> yes. That's not the journey. No. The journey is gently without forcing. And really important. Everyone will go on their own journey or turning into what's here to work with it in a new way. And that's what you seem mm. to have done is when you get signals in your body. It's like a dashboard. Mm. You're, you're getting so... to listen to the dashboard of signals. Whoop. Yeah. No, I was just going to um, sort of 100% back up what you said mm. is that I kind of went into this thinking, I need to think of some way to calm myself down and chill myself out. Mm -hmm. And then when we started the MBSR course, I think the first week the homework was notice things in your body as they arise. Mm -hmm. And I kind of developed the habit of saying out loud, I'm noticing something in my body. <laughs> so I would be, you know, like, I don't know, I'd walk into the living room and it's all messy and I've just tidied it up. And I would pronounce to my daughter and my oh, husband, out loud, I am like... noticing something in my body. <laughs> and it got to the stage where they were like, okay, we get it. You're noticing things in your body. You don't have to say it every time because it was like constant. I am now noticing other things in my body. <laughs> you know, and I'm joking, but at the time, mm. I was unprepared for how overwhelming that felt. Mm. And still now, sometimes I feel like I've opened this box that I can't ever close and I wouldn't want to, you know, because with this comes this. Yeah. But sometimes still what I'm feeling is quite overwhelming. It's a lot of stuff and it's mm. a lot of strong stuff. But still, there's this little voice now that says, hey, man, that's okay. Yeah. Just either you get to choose. Do you want to sit and just feel that stuff for a second? Mm. Or do you want to go make a pot of soup? You know, mm. distract yourself, doing something you enjoy, and at the end of it, you get to nourish your body. Mm -hmm. And maybe by then, the volume on all this stuff will have turned down a little bit. Mm. And you'll be in a better place to sit and be with it and feel it and and notice it and mm. and all that stuff. Whereas before mindfulness, all of that stuff's still happening. Mm. But your eye, I mean, for me, having a large glass of wine or mm. and I, you know. Don't get me wrong, I never considered myself to be somebody who would uh, numb my feelings with drink. Mm. Like, that's not me. I have a glass of wine because I like having a glass of wine. I think about it differently now. Mm. I don't necessarily think, oh, that's for sure what I was doing. Not at all, but I, I am curious about it. Mm. You know, I am. And so, again, it's just that being with it mm. and knowing that you have choices I, I, and that wedge that moment where you get to say okay i'm noticing this stuff oh it's a doozy 
there's a lot of stuff. Mm. What do I choose to do right now? Rather than, or, you know, yeah. <laughs> headache or, or shout at someone or, you know, mm. buy something mm. on the internet or whatever. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sh you shopping know. therapy, Amazon therapy. Yeah, yeah. You get to, uh, when you, you know, I was going to say on a good day, but what I mean is when, for me, when I've been practicing and I remember, because mm. it's not always, you know, I still react often sure. to things. It's a practice. Mm. Um, but it feels really great in those moments not the, the feelings don't feel great mm. but the agency yeah is see. so transformative yeah. getting to choose this is really um what you're naming the the agency that comes from choice rather than automatic habitual reactivity mm -hmm. which we all have so, so so no one is immune to it even like 20, 30, 40, whatever, lifetime of meditation, mm -hmm. we will still experience reactivity or upsetness. But what's different with practice, we get to catch it sooner. Mm. Recalibrate like, whoa, I am really off track right now. What's going on? This tuning in, this choice. Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to what you shared, like these moments, even you sitting with, hmm, is it wise for me now to have that glass of wine? Not making it good or bad, like, ooh, I normally reach for that. Would it help me now, this moment, today, maybe tomorrow? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. so there's a little choice in how you deal with things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even when you do react, and then after the fact, there's for for me, there's more of a likelihood that I will sit with how I feel about how I reacted. Mm. And I'm quicker to apologize. I apologize all the time to my daughter. You know, I'm sorry I said that. My feelings are not yours to carry. And mm. um, I was frustrated. I shouldn't have, have said that in that voice, you know, or whatever, whatever has happened. I'm a lot quicker to um again it's practice apologize mm. is hard yes um you know because we have to sit in our own guilt or shame or you know the hardest places um and then bring them into the light and even if i react badly or in a way that i feel um badly about mm -hmm. i'm much more likely and uh, quicker to to deal with that to do something about it to call mm -hmm. the person and say you know or even if it's like um i know i when you asked me that thing yesterday i said i would do it but mm -hmm. on reflection i'm sorry it would mean that this other part of my life would suffer so even though i said i would i apologize i understand how inconvenient that is i'm sorry i couldn't do the thing mm -hmm. or myself justice you know, like, I'm way more likely to uh, take action to, to sort of rectify something, to change it. Mm. I don't feel like I have to just, you know, well, said it, so I have to do it. I have to stick to it. Yeah, very kind of fixated. Right. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm more likely to really notice that feeling of, gosh, I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have agreed to that and actually do something about it. Mm. Um, and again, you know, like boundaries, boundaries are really hard. Yeah. Um, in the moment, they're really, really hard, but in the long term, much better. So, and, and for me, all of this stuff is rooted in mindfulness. Mm. All of it is rooted in listen, noticing, listening, paying attention and sitting with those things. Mm. You know, because sometimes you sit in discomfort and you think, no, I'm actually, I'm okay with it. It is uncomfortable, but that's okay. You know, it's not always action. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you actually, this allows us what you're describing, you know, when there's discomfort, when there's feelings, like they're telling us something, like this example you shared of like, oh, I don't know. I, I told them I could do this. 
but I'm, I know this, I need to tell them that I can change the deadline or whatever it is, mm -hmm. something's bubbling mm -hmm. because often how um, we deal with things is push things down. This is very mm -hmm. human. We like to push things down. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a neat metaphor used, uh, which is a beach ball metaphor. And, you know, when we push our emotions down, it's like pushing a beach ball in water, like in a pool. <laughs> Sooner or later, what's going to happen? Something is going to make it go poof when yep. you don't want it. Yep. So that's back to agency. You honoring yourself and having the humbleness and courage to speak like uh, my truth right now, mm -hmm. I need to adjust. And that's mm -hmm. not easy to do. Like admitting we need to no. change. <laughs> no. And the person you're talking to might not like it. No. <laughs> but that's not, but that's not yours to carry either. And that is also uh, like the best practice at sitting in discomfort. I am very much. Some people might hear me say this and think, what are you talking about? But I'm a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I want people to like me. Um, and I have st definitely struggled and still struggle with saying things that I know are going to be unpopular mm -hmm. or make somebody not like me or be unhappy with me. And again, mindfulness doesn't solve that yeah. in any way, but it gives you a, a tool in your toolbox to help you navigate it and to help work your way through it and then reflect on it. Um, mm. Because, you know, regardless of, of how many tools you have or books you've read or experience you have mm -hmm. sometimes you're gonna stuff it up yes <laughs> you know oh god all the all the time all the time mm. you know especially when you talk as much as i do i feel like mm. your chances are increased because it's constantly this stuff coming out but the mindfulness just mm. it just really gives you something to help you through it all mm. you know and when when there's too many things coming in to help you through it all again there's a wee voice that says okay should we just should we just sit for a second and let mm. our glitter settle we don't have to have all the answers right now in this moment we can just sit settling your glitter i think that's something that came from um something i read about you know about helping your kids and i very much um apply that one to myself mm. I'm like okay the glitter's all <laughs> <laughs> yes recognizing when oh right now i'm stirred up oh okay. and and something eaten when you're saying your your inner voice the uh, can you say a little more about what's changing because it's sounding like it's more kindness of like instead of like why mm. are you having more glitter in your it's like oh it's, it could be like an oh no but it, it seems like a little soft more more softening of that inner we all have an inner critic who doesn't mm -hmm. but there's something can you say a little bit about the inner talk and maybe yeah, I mean, compassion that, and... that's something i learned mm. from you is is the you know shining is it shining the light of kindness <laughs> again like that's something to me that sounds not silly but mm. i'm like okay the light of kindness <laughs> but i you know i physically in the body scan i physically picture the torch mm. the flashlight sorry you, you guys call mm. them a flashlight um, and right. <laughs> there's so many there's so many of those things that I actually, I get, I'm a very visual person. Mm. I visualize the flashlight. And when it comes to that uh, kindness, you know, I think there was a, uh, there was a discussion we had one time about um, the garden grows that is tended. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a, there was one about a wolf. Mm -hmm the i can't remember the story but I, you I have picture, two wolves which I picture the wolf mm. and it reminds me that it's easy for me to be kind 
to my husband, my daughter, my friends, my family, it's easy for me to see them as good people having a hard time. But when it comes to me, I am bad. I have failed. I have, you know, I'm not good enough. Um, all of those things come crashing in. Oh. And it's that reminder, hang on a second. Mm. Let's just keep this in perspective. And, and it's very much still something I have to practice. Mm. I actually often go to somebody I am uh, close with and that I trust mm. and that I am able to be in my shame with. And I'll say, you know, I have a couple of friends in particular, I'll say, I've done something, I'm feeling all the shame, I need to bring it out into the light. Mm. Because that's how you diminish yeah. shame, right? Shame thrives in the dark. Mm. And I'll say, I've done this thing, it might not be that bad, but I'm feeling all the shame. I just want to tell you the whole thing. And typically what happens is they laugh at me. And they give me a hug and say, oh, my God, Joe, it's not that bad. It might not have been the best thing to say or to do. So so what what do you want to do about it? Mm. You know, like help me. But they 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 help me keep things in perspective. And I it's a practice for me to to do that by myself, to be able to do that by myself. You know, because you can't always call someone every time. You right, do right. I'd be on the phone all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, reminding myself if I can see them as good people having a hard time, maybe I'm a good person having a hard time, and it's easy to say. You know, but to really, to feel that and to believe that is harder. Is a harder thing. But um. Sometimes you've got to start on the, on the outside and it works its way in, you know. What a beautiful description of like seeing others with kindness and they're just good people having a hard time. If it's a friend of yours, like, oh, but applying it to you. So really becoming, you know, mm. friends with yourself. Yeah. And there's this kind of yeah. holding space for ourselves is, is mindfulness teaches how oh. can it be oh sometimes we can be so harsh like this kinder holding space of, yeah. of befriending really befriending ourselves totally and yeah. it's really really hard yeah totally yeah 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 and actually that idea of um this was something that has just only come to me recently so it might be a bit dribbly so one of the ways, I guess, in which that that wedge, that pause has come up for me is when I'm with other people and I hear them criticizing things or people or the world. Mm. I kind of had this moment recently where I realized that I was criticizing something. And I, I kind of hit that pause button and thought, well, that's not actually what you think. You, you you are not critical of that thing. You you think that it's okay to do that. So where is this instant judgment coming from? Mm. And it kind of struck me that the reason I was so judgmental out there was because about I have, someone about what? someone else yeah. is because I have always criticized myself for that thing. Um. And and once you notice those things, you see them everywhere. You know, it's like, it's like another little door gets opened, like, mm. oh, now you're in this room and you can see all of this stuff. <laughs> and so now when I hear somebody criticizing something, whether it's, oh my God, their house is always so messy, or their kids never have their hair brushed, or their, you know, their kids eat crap or, or whatever about it is. It's like, oh my God, this is coming from you. This is because you beat yourself up for this stuff. You judge yourself mm. so harshly about this thing for whatever reason, you know, mm. rightly or wrongly, the judgment is coming from you to yourself. Yeah. When you look out into the world, 
it's and so when you have that pause button it just i just find that pause button is unlocking so many things so many uh, realizations so many moments and they 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 can be a lot you're not always ready to you don't get to choose when you get to realize something about yourself but i would rather have the realization and it be a bit overwhelming and to sit with it and learn about it and deal with it than to not have it at all you know um like there's no question for me Mm. It, it, it's definitely something that I have no question. I will be on a journey with this until the day I die. Mm. Realizing and noticing and, and it's a little terrifying if I'm honest, <laughs> because I don't know that mm. I'm made of sturdy enough stuff to carry it all. Mm. But Which at is the same a thought point, as well. The mind has. Yeah. Oh, what if it crushes me? Yeah. You know, and then the pause comes in again well we'll just sit with it have a cup of tea and see where we get you know it's like uh i feel like when things are bad and stressful and overwhelming it's like this spiral leading you down Mm. and the opposite is that when you have that pause button or that um practice to go to or that that moment to just be in it's this spiral taking you in the other direction you know i, I just realized it right now <laughs> yeah but and that's kind of how, it's kind of how it feels. you don't necessarily know what's up there mm. or or what's going to be on the road but um well just notice it mm. along the way so it's almost this reverse, like the spiraling that happens when we have thoughts and reactive and upset and, blah, 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 and recognizing it, like you, you know, those who are just listening and are watching and kind of using the finger, kind of doing a spiraling motion and moving upwards. It's recognizing there's actually a way through this. There's a way yes. through this spinning rather than we're out of control. We have no choice because yeah. that, that's a difficult feeling we, we all have. It's like, I, I can't control what's happening. And often it spins us to kind of deeper downward spiral. Yes. And you did this great visual of like, okay, we it pauses it and it helps me spiral upward again, come back. Yeah. Up. And I, yeah. and I think what you said is, is better rather than up. It's mm. a way through. Yeah. What's it they say when you're going through hell, keep going. Yeah. It's that idea that there's, you know, we'll get through it. Yeah. 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 Not easy, but that's mm-hmm. the choice that has uh, likely a better outcome. Yeah. 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 So, so I'm wondering if this is, you know, uh, time is truly flying by. So, so enjoying and appreciating like your open hearted sharing about your journey, because this is real. This is your journey and yeah. how it's, it's an ongoing like life journey, which I'm on as well. And that's why I, I continue to be excited to share this work, teach this work. Because really, it's day to day. It's not like we sit and meditate two days and life is fixed. Mm. It becomes an adventure. Like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Good, mm. bad, ugly. How can I be with it? So I'm wondering just, you know, in the time we have left, I'm curious, what would you say to someone who's thinking about giving mindfulness or mindfulness-based stress reduction MBSR a chance? I mean, like, I don't know. what, Like, what... What would have helped you when you weren't sure at the start? Like, what is it for you? And what can you tell someone to give this mindfulness a chance? That's a really hard one because, Mm. I mean, I don't like being told what to do. Mm. I think people have to come to it in their own space, in their own time. Mm. Because if you... For me, if I try and come to something when I'm not coming with a an open heart and an open mm. mind, it's a giant waste of everybody's time. Yeah. However, that being said, there's nothing in my life I have ever come across that has affected 
every single aspect of my life and being a human being in the world so completely and thoroughly as mindfulness, the principle of mindfulness, this idea of noticing and being able to hit pause. Even just the noticing, it's like the matrix, right? It's like the opening your eyes to something that was there all along, Mm. but you were so wrapped up in your own stuff that you couldn't or didn't see it. And when you do start to see it, it's a lot. But the world has never been more vibrant, um, rich, full of noise and color and Mm. um, fireworks. You know, fireworks can be good and bad. You you know, uh, one of the mindfulness classes I did in the beginning, it talked about the idea that when you first come to mindfulness, it can feel like a very effortful thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're sitting there and I've got to do this and I must do this and stop being distracted and the whole and all the pressure, you know, it's very much and it requires effort. But really what you're doing is kind of falling back. I often when I'm meditating, I picture myself jumping backwards off a cliff. Mm. That, that, and there's no ground you know i'm just mm. and i'm just suddenly completely um unencumbered and completely free to notice mm. everything everything i can hear everything i can see everything i can feel and it's it's transformative yeah you know as a parent Parenting was probably one of the the biggest, um, the thing that has caused me one of, you know, the biggest, um, not hurdle exactly, but I really, really want to get it right. Mm, My daughter is so important to me. I really want to not mess it up. And, and, you know, you only know what you know you know how you were mm-hmm. parented you can read all the books yeah um and it turns out that if you read enough books you can find a book that um confirms or denies pretty much anything you mm-hmm. want to think or feel about parenting and where where i've landed is really noticing her mm. and being led by her and i'm not talking about doing everything she wants or giving her everything she asks for Mm. um but you know the book says this oh no it can't be that because the book says this and it turns out when you actually know when you actually pay attention i didn't get that kid i got this kid and my flavor of kid actually responds she's telling me i'm just not listening Mm. and it turns out when you listen when you really listen you know oh you find that thing really, really hard and it's making you very stressed and upset. Mm. So why would I keep making you do it? Let's do something else. You know, and society, the societal pressures of um, what you feed your kid, how you dress your kid, what out of school activities they have to do, how many they should do, you know, and they should be doing this and should be doing that. and, (laughs) and And it turns out that if you just listen to your kid, you know, I'm not saying don't try things. I mean, sure, try things. Yeah, Go for it. yeah. But, but then listen to what, like, pay attention to to how that is working or not working, and if and and listen to your gut. I think we're so often trained out of listening to ourselves. You know, not with just with our kids, but with our bodies. Mm. We go to the doctor. Doctor, high up there on the plinth. Yeah, yeah. All seeing eye. <laughs> Tell me what magical pill I should take to fix all of my ills. How about you just listen to your body? I mean, abs- I believe in science and I believe in medicine. Oh, of course. Yeah, we, we need you know, that. I, I am a, a big proponent of going to the doctor. Yeah. That's what's needed. But I, I think in so many ways in our lives, we have been trained out of listening to ourselves. Yeah. And um, 
and mindfulness helps you tune back in. You know, it helps you tune back in mm. to, to you, first of all, you know, that whole adage of putting your own oxygen mask on first. Yeah. You know, and, and I had to completely relearn from scratch how to listen to myself. You know, because I was drinking all the green smoothies and doing all the exercises and doing all the things. And I was still completely broken. Mm. Um, so that was a long way of saying if somebody's thinking about giving this a shot, give it a shot. Mm. What have you got to lose? It might change your entire life. Or, or, or you might say, meh, it's not for me. Not for right me. Now. And then, it's yeah, totally. It's not totally. for me right now. It's not for me in this moment. Oh, well, yeah. give it a try. Or, you know, maybe, you know, life is hard. Yeah. Often. There's all, adulting sucks. <laughs> There's all sorts of stuff going on. But what if... What if through mindfulness, you get to offset that with a million other little moments that you might have otherwise missed? Yeah. You're still going to have to deal with the sucky stuff. But in addition to that, you get the feel of your daughter's fingers in your hand as you walk her to school, possibly mm. for the last time, because she's getting to that stage where she might not want that anymore. Yeah. So being there for these precious moments. Being there and noticing. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I know that sounds cheesy, that the holding her hand example, but that for me right now is a really real thing. But it's meaningful. I, I'm, I'm counting every single one. Oh, yeah, you're, you're being you know? there for it. Because, it, I mean, that's part of change. Things don't stay totally. how they are. Like, you know, we're never ready for change. Change doesn't yeah. ask us if we're ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it yeah. just happens and like oh yeah. now we're here yeah so what if what if there's a chance for you to experience all that awesome stuff mm. it's happening all around you you know again it sounds cheesy but the way the light comes through the cherry tree in my front garden you know that minute when all the american robins come out in spring and there's like a hundred of them on the tree but they're only there for five minutes and then they bugger off mm. and then i never see them again like imagine you got to catch more of those mm. you know they just they 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 fill up your cup so that when life comes to drain the cup there's already more in it or something i don't know that's a great metaphor it's like you know? all these moments we can miss Oh, and do but all the time. We do, but you yeah. know, being present, this there's so much to gain in giving yeah. mindfulness a chance, or those who are practicing to keep going with it. Oh, and, but, and and that's the other thing. If you yeah. are giving it a chance and it's hard, keep going. Yeah, you don't need to know what the answer is or the destination. Mm -mm. Trust. Just yeah. keep going. Keep going. Mm. Blindly, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, what words of encouragement and truly, I mean, thank you for the, your courageous heart to share a story, your willingness. This is, you know, vulnerability and sharing like truth. This is truth that uh, may this uh, provide opportunity for uh, so many to give this a chance if it appeals to them and we do have at our center, uh, Center for Mindfulness Canada. I'll leave that link below for information sessions. Um, obviously, you can learn mindfulness anywhere you want, but here's one place you can. I want to thank you again. I truly enjoyed this conversation. And thank it, you for it, it's, having me. I, I, it, in talking about it, it helps me not figure it out but it helps. It's very much part of the journey for me. Is 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 helping order all the thoughts and all the things I noticed. So um, I feel enormously uh, grateful for having the opportunity to talk with you about it. Thank you so much, Joe. And I also want to thank all the viewers and the listeners. Thank you for your time. And 
If you found this useful, feel free to share, like, and if you haven't done already, maybe subscribe. Thank you again. May your moments be filled with ease and may you be present in as many of them.